Kashua Lauren Des. I call it Kachapon. Uh, Kachapon are little toys, keychains, hats, all sorts of things that you can get out of vending machines in Japan. And they're for different movies, different TV shows, different types of food, Pokemon, Sanrio characters. And I collect very weird ones, like girls with seashells on their heads. <laughs> or snails with edamame shells. Um, it's a great way to use up change that you have before you leave, and it's the first thing that we do whenever we land in Japan is find a gachapon machine. This is my Japan. Hi, I'm Mike, and my Japan is exploring. So being a student at Waseda University, I was able to explore various streets around town, learn about lots of new culture, and also gain lots of new friends at school, especially by joining different school groups. So going from not knowing many Japanese people to having a group of about 40 students that I can talk with, interact, and learn and enjoy culture through them, and have a good time as well. So that's about it, and that's my Japan. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dante, and my Japan is Naruto. I was first exposed to Naruto at five years old and because of that, growing up with the show for 15 years, I got to experience different parts of Japanese culture. I even got to go to Japan when I got to high school and I've got to work with different Japanese organizations and I'm very, very appreciative of it. It's because of Naruto, which was the origins of my interest in Japanese culture that I got to experience so many wonderful things. This is my Japan. My name is John Neptune. And my Japan is bamboo and music and my home. So I've lived in Japan for more than half of my life. I'm not sure which half is Japanese, but I'm very comfortable there. I particularly like the way that people relate to each other without aggression. Uh, and the emphasis on subtle things in the music and also other performing arts is very important. So my Japan is bamboo music because I play shakuhachi and my home. This is my Japan. Hi, I'm Mike Sagawa. I'm a high school Japanese teacher in Michigan City, Indiana. And what is my Japan? Uh, Japan is the country, the language, the culture, the aesthetic that I teach about that I want my students to love. Japan is an ancestral homeland. I'm half Japanese, but fourth generation at that, so it's a distant, 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 mysterious world that I've always been curious about. Um, I've been teaching for almost 20 years now, and I'm still endlessly curious. Japan, uh, my children are bilingual, bicultural. My wife is Japanese, so Japan is where Jichan and Bachan are, and it's where we get to refresh ourselves and learn all these new things and have these adventures that their classmates don't. Japan is where I learn and train in Kendama, uh, third dan, hoping to go fourth dan. Uh, Japan is a place I'm always going to be curious about. Hi, my name is Hashim Kotaro Barucha, and my Japan is uh, the music from Japan from the late 70s to the early 80s. And um, I've been DJing for about 20 years now. I started off DJing hip hop and um, funk and soul from the US. And about 15 years ago, I started digging for Japanese music. I was living in Tokyo at the time. And I started realizing that there's something really unique about the music from Japan from the late 70s and 80s. Um, it, it kind of mixed the, the sensibilities from um, American funk and soul but it had a really distinct um, Japanese element to it. The melodies had this, what you call aishukan in Japanese, the, the melancholic melodies of Japan that mixed with the um, uh, American uh, funk and soul. So artists like um, Yuming or Tatsuro Yamashita, um, people like um, Hosono Haromi, they all had this, uh, the music is very Japanese and very Western at the same time. And so I'd say, for me, my Japan is um, the music of Japan, the records from late 70s and early 80s. Thank you. My name is Ted Sajewski, and my Japan is the Yokocho, not to be confused with the Kabukicho. 
You know, Japan has so many great places to eat, to drink, to meet up with really good friends. If I want to visit all three, Yokocho is the only answer for me. I love the food, I love the drink, I love the quaint atmosphere. And, well, you know, for those that don't actually know what that is, you know, it's, they're, they're actually, it's a, it's a long, narrow, kind of a yakitori smoke-filled alley, and it has these tightly packed small bars that go along the side. Did I say small? <laughs> I actually meant tiny. They are so tiny that some of these bars can only fit about six patrons in them, but it's really quaint, and it's just a ton of fun. And you know, they don't always speak English in them either, but everybody speaks Osake just fine. <laughs> and you know, meeting friends, as you often do in Tokyo, you go to the restaurants to meet, you know, we'll go to the Yokocho to meet or something like that. Look, if you're meeting friends and you're having a few kanpais and it's Japan, you know there's going to be food. <laughs> there's always food. For me, visiting these historic kind of folksy, um, kind of aromatic, smoke-filled izakayas, you know, on the Yokocho is like, it's like traveling back in the time, only with, only with, you know, good food, good drink, and good friends, both old and new. Uh, that's, for me, the Yokocho, it is my Japan.